Hello friends, we've arrived in Bethlehem, the city of our Lord's birth. And this church behind me is the oldest church in the Holy Land. Uh, it's the second church built on this site and it dates all the way back to around 540. Uh, the original church was built here by St. Helena, the mother of Constantine 325. A lot of times when you're in the Holy Land, uh, the explanation is, well, we think it was here. We think this happened here. But with the birth of Jesus, we are certainly definitive. Uh, and I'll post some pictures after this video of uh, the, the spot that marks the birthplace of Jesus because the early Christians marked it. They knew that this was the place. And so praise God uh, for this wonderful place where Christians have gathered uh, since the 300s and in truth, even before that, venerating the great love that God has for us and that he allowed his son to become one of us, to be born for us. This city, Bethlehem, can be translated in, uh, amongst some in, in Hebrew as house of bread, uh, which is great for us because Jesus becomes the bread of life. But in Arabic, it's translated house of meat, right? There's real substance in Jesus. He changes our lives. He wants to change your life. A well, little town of Bethlehem isn't so little anymore. There's a small number of Christians living here. It was once a majority Christian town. It's now only 25% majority Muslim. And the Christians who are here live with great hardship. So as you watch this video, just please pause and offer a prayer for them. This is in the Church of Bethlehem. This is the spot believed since the uh, beginning of Christianity that Jesus himself was born. <clears throat> For those of us who love to study the scriptures, this is the cave where St. Jerome spent many, many decades translating the entire Bible uh, into Latin, what became known as the Vulgate. And then when he passed away here, this was where he was uh, originally buried, his body eventually moved on to um, uh, Rome, where it is today. But this is the place, this cave, where some traditions believe the Holy Family uh, would have lived also before the flight into Egypt. Uh, this is the inn that they went to, uh, this cave. And then because there was no room, they ended up back through that area into a stable area with the animals where Jesus was in fact born. Hello friends, uh, out in Bethlehem, in one of the shepherd's caves. So this, um, it, these types of caves are found throughout uh, the, the, the fields and the, and the hill country here in Bethlehem. Uh, they're, they're huge, right? Uh, because it's limestone and so it was easily carved out and sometimes carved out by the water itself. So this is a, a small chapel uh, that's placed inside one of these caves. And it was in these types of caves where the shepherds would have lived along with their sheep. And it was in a cave similar to this where Mary and Joseph would have found shelter and possibly stayed because we know that the people of Bethlehem at the time of Jesus were, were living in caves like this all over the place, right? It was a very common thing, right? So we wouldn't want to say Mary and Joseph were, were caveman or cavewoman, but they probably spent some time living in a cave when they came to Bethlehem. But what happened out here? Um, you know, God comes and speaks to uh, the shepherds in the fields. These fields, which I'll show pictures of after the video, um, were where not just any sheep and lambs were, were grown, but the ones that were used in temple sacrifice. Uh, every day at the temple, which is just eight miles from here in Jerusalem, uh, there was a temple sacrifice of lambs in the morning and in the afternoon. And that was for the expiation of sin. Uh, God invited the Jewish people to make this sacrifice so that they could, uh, you know, be aware that God was saving his people. And of course, those lamb sacrifices were just a preparation for the true sacrifice that would happen uh, when his son Jesus would come, who is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. And so while I'm out here in Bethlehem, it's easy to think about the Christmas mystery that we just celebrated a few weeks ago and uh, the beautiful gift of, of trees and and presents and the decorations that we miss from our home, but really the Christmas mystery uh, that began in caves such as this uh, is about mercy, about God being willing to forgive our sins. That's the gift that Jesus offers us. It's the gift he offers you. 
Don't hold on to your sin. Don't hold on to shame. Don't hold on to guilt. Let him forgive you. And if you want to give a gift to someone else, forgive them for what they've done to you.